Welcome to All Change, the programme that puts design at the heart of the learning experience. Today we're in Milton Keynes at Drayton Park School, where we're going to be transforming a busy library into a multifunctional learning space. Drayton Park School have given us a brief to improve their library. At the moment it's in a busy corridor with lots of children passing through on their way to class. Not a very good place to sit and read a book. We'll be working with the school community over a single weekend to transform the library into a more useful learning space. The main problem with the existing area is that there is nowhere for pupils to sit and write when using books for project work. Our design will provide workstations which maximise use of space and which will also help with circulation through the corridor. And also in today's All Change, we'll be visiting De Rijker Marsh Morgan Architects, who have developed a futuristic concept for a rural secondary school under a domed roof. And we'll be going to Paget Primary School in Birmingham, who have worked with a landscape artist to design an outdoor learning space with a difference. And we'll be providing some ideas for sourcing a range of different desks and workstations. A busy corridor isn't necessarily the best place for a library. The challenge for the All Change team this week is to transform this space into somewhere where pupils can research, learn and relax. The corridor links lower and upper school classrooms. Several doorways lead into the library area and children pass through it all through the day. It's both a library and an important circulation space. Um, at the moment, the biggest problem is that it's basically a corridor. Uh, it links the two sides of the building, so we have Key Stage 1 down that end and Key Stage 2 down there. And this is the only way that they can get through from one room to the other. And also because we've got hall access as well, uh, it just becomes less of a, a library and a learning space, and more of a, a walkway through the building. Um, and so it's not stimulating and the children don't really want to come in here at all. And what do you want to get from the, the new design? Uh, it needs to be somewhere where the children feel like they can come and research and pick up a book and really enjoy what a library should have to offer. They can sit down and curl up with a good book or they can chat with their friends about an issue they're talking about in class and just making it a lot more interactive and a lot more inviting for the children so that they will want to come down here. Architect Sholanda de Cruz designed the new look for the Corridor Library. Marco de Cruz and his team consulted with staff at Drayton Park School before meeting up with our project manager John Craig to discuss the installation of a linear set of workstations along the corridor. Picking up from what the school said, they wanted this space to be unified and uh, this strong element comes through and engages with that route through and it just pulls all the space together. And I think the key to that is this linear element because it's using the space effectively. We've used the, uh, the idea of a, a bar or a coffee bar, something that you might find in a station or in an airport, somewhere where somebody might pull out a, a laptop or make a mobile phone call. And those are usually very efficient spaces because people have to move around them. So we're using that idea because it's the same kind of flow pattern. You've got people going from the hall to the classrooms and back again, and we want people to be able to use that space effectively. So by lifting the, work, the working plane up, uh, by providing stools which can then be tucked under when they're not in use, um, we're freeing the floor, but also creating this very effective linear workstation. So John, this is quite a challenging space this morning. You've hit the nail on the head there. I think the biggest problems we have here, because it's the only room for a library in the actual school, is the fact that it's a corridor. Mm -hmm. And not only is it a corridor, there's actually five doors leading to this area. But the whole idea of the planning here is to, to build a workstation and uh, to sort of unify. I mean, Marco's feeling was he wanted to have linear lines running everywhere in yellow and white. Um, and then, of course, down in this corner here, we have actually a little chill-out area with many little sofas so they can sit and read and the teacher can actually sit with them and read stories to them. So, but there's a fair amount of construction. And there's going to be a lovely freeze as well above the window, isn't there? There is. In fact, we've got the children actually cutting out letters and doing this little alphabet here running along the top. And as you can see from that, I mean, we've got some bookshelves here. Not only are these going to be workstations as well, there is going to be sort of like a canopy roof over the top of it to sort of pull it all together. And then we drop down to this little section here where there are bookshelves onto this as well. So we're adding some bookshelves as well as taking away a few at the moment. So we're not losing anything there. 
So it's going to be really quite different when you're finished. I hope so. It'd be worth the, the, the effort. The whole school community got involved with the project. Heavy steel bookshelves and hundreds of books had to come out. Project manager John Craig got cracking with building the workstations. Andy, the school caretaker, helped with the painting. Teachers, pupils, and even a school governor got stuck in. Oh, you've got to paint the one hat. <laughs> Sorry. Drayton Park's catchment is one of Milton Keynes' most deprived areas. The school used to have both a primary and a separate middle school on the site. The school was built sort of late 60s, early 70s uh, as part of London Overspill and it was actually built as two separate schools. So at one end is the first school and the other end is what was the middle school and they were combined together in 95. The geography therefore of the building is quite difficult because in the middle is the kitchen and the two dining rooms which make merging the two schools into one quite, quite a challenge. So you've had some issues with using the spaces that you've got? That's right, yes. I mean, and the, what's happening this weekend with the library, for example, to make it accessible for young children as well as the older children, we had to move it from upstairs because it was just not in an appropriate place upstairs for the smaller children to be able to use it. School governor Sharon Alexander is running up bead bags for the library's new chill-out zone. Her experience in secondary schools is valued by Sue Naylor and her management team. Sharon, you're a governor here at Drayton Park. Tell me about your involvement with the school. Well, as a governor, I am involved in governors' meetings and in committees, and the, the site and the environment that the students and the teachers are working in are really important to us. So it's really about every meeting, um, issues come up, how we're spending the budget, how we're looking at repairs and maintenance, but I think, more importantly, how things like today uh, developing the learning environment, making the best use of what we've got. And you work at another school nearby? I do. I'm vice principal in a secondary school. Um, we're quite a new build. We're five years old and still building. So while it's a very different environment, we, I think, have similar issues about how we use our space and what we do with it. Many of our schools were built at a time when the creation of fantastic learning environments was well down the priority list. The need to drive down costs resulted in utilitarian buildings which were simply no good for learning. As a result, and in an effort to create more individualised schools, teams of architects have been working with the government's Building Schools for the Future programme to create radical designs with great learning environments at their core. Dereik and Marsh Morgan have come up with a design which uses the principles of a massive covered dome, like the Eden Project in Cornwall. Their ideas were based on their work refurbishing Kingsdale School in Southwark. Stainless steel walkways replaced traditional corridors and they built a futuristic auditorium, all under a radical plastic roof. They adapted this concept for the Schools of the Future scheme. We created uh, a mini cityscape of modular classrooms that could be built up in any series of uh, configuration depending on the needs of the schools, which uh, a triangular in form which um, encourage uh, a new approach to, uh, to a teaching environment, uh, a, a real shift away from the Victorian uh, layout of the regimented um, desks uh, facing the teacher at one end and inviting teachers to, to configure the classroom as they see most appropriate. Although it looks like a flight of fancy, you only need to visit Kingsdale School to see that it is actually a reality. Uh, Kingsdale have a, a vast ETFE roof covering it. Um, a central courtyard and it creates a fantastic environment for a whole series of programs and activities to take place and that's very much um, the idea that we had for the exemplar school. On the ground floor level we have two large hall spaces, one which is a, a large sports facility music performance space and the other uh, a space akin to a library where pupils can interact and do their own studies with uh, IT. And at lunchtime this becomes a, a vibrant uh, cafe space. Rising up um, to the deck level we've avoided this uh, notion of um, corridors that typifies many schools and all the circulation space becomes a very usable space. We have extra activities that take place. There's places for lockers, places for people to hang out to charge their laptops. Spaces that can be spill out spaces from classrooms and you can learn beyond the parameters of the class. Up onto the 
upper levels, we move through the different de departments and across the connection bridges that, that link the different departments together. They're a mixture of circulation via stairs, walkways and also lifts, so it's a fully accessible building. The upper levels are formed in a way like a, a mini cityscape of these modular classrooms that are both hermetically sealed or can open out to terraces adjacent. And at the top of the roof we have a large ventilation aperture that brings all the fresh air and the whole school is enclosed within this large uh, ETFE roof uh, which is called a Jura. Lots of cutting for John Craig to construct the supports for the workstations. See, pay to measure twice. The alphabet freeze gets underway. The children of Drayton Park were encouraged to take ownership of the design. It's very much their library. Tell me what your library's like at the minute. Really squishy. There's loads of people trying to get through, and it's really small. Sort of yeah. hard to get round. Yes, that's really when you wanted to look at like all the sports books because there's only like a thin gap where it could fit through. Okay, so not very much space. What else? Mm, well, not a lot of chairs. Yes, because like we used to all argue about who sat where, they'd end up all squashing down onto one little sofa or chair. Okay. So, what do you think of the new library then? Have you seen the plans for it? What's it yeah. going to be like when it's finished? Good. I think it'll be quite good actually because there'll be more room to go around and look at books and more seats to sit down. I think the work area will help with your projects. Yeah. You'll be able to use the yeah. reference books, won't you? Yeah. Because they, they can't be taken out right. of the library, so they'll be able to use them there and have lots of space to get their writing done. Okay. Helen, many primary schools now are adopting interactive whiteboards. How many do you have in the school? We only have the one at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, we were lucky enough to take part in the National Whiteboard Project, um, seeing how what ICT and a whiteboard can be used in literacy and numeracy. Um, but we do intend to get more across the school in time. And what difference has it made to class teaching in, in this year? Uh, a huge difference. There's so many different ways you can introduce a subject. I mean, particularly when you're looking at numeracy, if you're talking about place value, it's a very difficult concept to get your head around, whereas using ICT with all the different visual stimulus you can use, and also the fact that the children can interact and move things around on the board, it just makes things so much easier for them. Mm. And how did you decide where to put the whiteboard in this classroom? Because it's quite a big space you've got here. Yeah, that was a nightmare. We've got windows on three walls. So the first problem was setting it far enough away from the windows to avoid the glare, and also not too close to heaters. So onto ICT more generally, um, primary schools have to make hard decisions about whether to have central ICT suites or whether to use ICT flexibly around the school. How did you decide what to do? Um, we decided in this school that ICT really does need to be embedded totally into the curriculum and that it isn't just a separate subject. So for that reason we've done away with having a separate ICT suite. And in Key Stage 2 we now have um, lap trucks, which is just a case with laptops in it and they can then be moved around the whole of Key Stage 2. So they're timetabled for specific ICT lessons, but they can also be used in literacy, numeracy, history, and it makes such a difference. It makes ICT so much more accessible mm -hmm. and flexible. So you've gone for a mobile ICT suite yeah. effectively then? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There was a little resistance initially because I think people thought, you know, you go down to the ICT suite and that's your time and you mm. do it down there. And how have pupils responded to that? They've loved it, yeah. as you can imagine. Um, computers, you know, they associate with gaming. So if you can use the computer to access learning, mm. then, you know, they're always on your side. School playgrounds can be exposed spaces with no shade and nowhere for children to sit and read and relax. The pupils of Paget Primary School in Birmingham have been working with an artist in residence to create an environmentally friendly space in their playground. Paget Primary linked with the government's creative partnership scheme to harness the creativity of a landscape architect who took up an artist in residency. Paget School's playgrounds are the classic tarmac spaces of skinned knees and football matches built in the 70s. The landscape architect encouraged the children to look at their surroundings and change them for the better using their own creativity. Mike Fletcher worked with the children to design a quiet, shady outdoor space for learning and play, 
Landscaping a grassy area with trees to provide shade and curved pathways were designed by Padgett pupils. Uh, these are some of the drawings that were produced by the children uh, when they were doing the, the beginning times of their design for the quiet shady space outside. Um, what Mike did with them was he uh, had them look down microscopes to find out uh, the shapes. And these are all pieces of plant that have been enlarged and they've all been designed by the children for how they would see pathways running. And these charcoal drawings, again, were part of the design process. And uh, I remember the first time I saw these things and I was completely shocked. I thought, this is what primary art is all about. This is about children being creative um, and expressing themselves in different kind of ways. And it's changed my whole view of what we can do um, with art because this has now been translated into, an out, into a finished product outside. The artist worked with the children to prototype designs for the pathways leading to the quiet, shady area. They used experimentation and iteration in dynamic studio sessions in the school hall. Bringing these kinds of activities into the curriculum is at the heart of the creative partnership proposition, and the children have a real sense of ownership of their landscape space. Everyone feels that this is their own uh, product, and I'm sure some of the children here now will be going past that particular structure in 10, 15 years' time say, I built that. It was very fun, but we got a bit messy because we had to do mud drawings. The patterns are really creative and um, it's not usual that you get loads of patterns uh, in, on a playground floor. Sometimes the paths are to play games on as well, or they follow the leads around the path like. I work with pupils around the country on school building design issues and one of the things they always highlight is the need for social spaces. Somewhere comfortable that they can sit, meet their friends, chat, really enjoy the spaces they've got around the school and yet too often those spaces are neglected or completely forgotten about. At Drayton Park they've taken this sofa from an area that's not used any longer in the school. They set it in a bright sunny corridor and they made it a space where small groups of children can come, relax in their break times and really have a good chat. Back in the library corridor, school governor Sharon Alexander is pattern cutting. These are going to be bean bags. One day. With all the teaching staff at Drayton Park being women, there's no blokes around to interfere with putting the mobile storage together. Girl power rocks. <laughs> So this is a really nice big space you've got for your foundation mm. stage, Helen, but I know you've got some problems with the way the rooms are organised. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got four separate rooms down here in foundation stage, and it used to be that we had two rooms that were set aside for the nursery and two rooms for reception. Uh, but now with a new foundation stage profile, we need to really pull the two year groups in together. Um, because of the way the classrooms are laid out as old fashioned classrooms, uh, it makes the space a lot more difficult for the children to have free flowing access between them. So you've got four different classrooms, each with different activities going on? Yeah, you? that's right. Uh, we have uh, a creative wet room, which obviously is then with the um, vinyl flooring so that if it gets wet, we've got um, a communications room which is all based around talking and, uh, and writing, early writing. We've got um, a role play room and then we've also got the investigative room which is uh, maths and science but also thinking you know, in terms of construction. So you've developed some strategies for tackling these challenges. Tell me what you're doing. I think this is the best uh, example just here because um, you can see we've got a, a door. What we're going to do is take the door off, but we've also got this glassed area with the shelving. Uh, and we're just going to take it out to make the entrance to the room an awful lot bigger. Uh, we're also starting to develop the outside space. And we've got lots of doors that access out there. So we can open the doors up, the children can move out there. And we're going to think about setting up um, hard standing or tracks for the children to play on their trikes and they can go around in circles. And also give them a chance to really get mucky and play in uh, the mud. and and you know, just experience outside because in foundation stage, the children shouldn't be having a separate playtime. Mm. They should be able to come in and out all the time. So these are all the challenges that we're hoping to get by by looking at the space that we've got and working with that.
Helen, it's been a really busy day. Have you it had has. fun? Yes, it has been good, actually. It's been very long and very tiring. But we've been very lucky. We've had all sorts of people come in through the doors. So lots of people with paintbrushes in hand. It's been really good. I saw staff here today and pupils. Yeah, and... absolutely. We've had teaching staff. We've had LSAs. We've had a uh, school governor doing the first bit of sewing she's done since she left school. Uh, and we've had children in painting and doing letters. It's been fantastic. It really has. They're really committed to the school, aren't absolutely, they? Absolutely, yes. It's been a good day. Fantastic. John, has it been a good day for you? It has, actually. I'm grateful for all the help, because I thought it was going to be me that was painting and sewing and <laughs> sticking on letters and everything, but that's all been done. So I've been able to concentrate on all these partitions. And uh, there's a few things missing. We still need to put all the ceiling lining and everything. Some shelves for more books, and then the worktops for the workstations. A bright new day, and Helen Cottington and John Craig are getting the linear workstations finished off. Laminated lettering needs cutting out. Keep that first there. And hundreds of books need sorting out, ready to go back into the library. Parent governor Ahmed Abdelahi leads the work party. What do you think of what's happening to the library? It's a great job, actually. It's a major job. And it's a renovation, so because the children can get, you know, a space so they can get, you know, better access where they can, you know, do the job, where they can read the books. It's really nice to see all the children involved, isn't it? Yes, because it will help to take care of what is going on. And they will appreciate, you know, how hard the job is. When I was at school, we all had the same desks with heavy wooden lids. If you were really unlucky, there'd be chewing gum stuck underneath as well. Nowadays, there are a range of really imaginatively designed workstations and desks. Here are some for you to have a look at. These days, there's a huge variety of desks and workstations available, tailored to the age of the pupils using them and the subjects being studied. The Postura is lightweight yet very strong and comes with a matching chair. The classmate storage lifts out. This desk converts into a drawing board. The Orbital's chair rotates around the desk. This folding bench unit provides flexible seating, which can be packed away for storage. All suppliers comply with the British Educational Suppliers Association Code of Practice, and full details are on the Teachers TV website. Here we go. Back at Drayton Park, the bean bags are nearly finished. Very comfortable, Mrs. Alexander. You could do your marking on these. You could... I could do my marking. I could do my teaching on these. <laughs> <laughs> John, you've achieved a tremendous amount so far, but time's moving on. What's still to be done? Um, there's a few more of these to go in. These are the actual workstations we were talking about earlier. You know, where we put the high stores on, the children can work and they can read and everything. There's a little bit of painting to do, a little touching up, and the shelves behind you. You know, the actual new shelves. They've got to be cut and fitted. It sounds a lot, I know but I reckon uh, it'll be done. Everyone's pulling together to get the new library finished on time. This was another scary. The new workstations are in, and comfy seating and book storage go into the chill zone. The brief was for a more useful library space for children to read, research and relax in. Yellow ceiling panels carry the line down the corridor and across into the chill zone. There's still plenty of space for circulation and for the storage of books.
the reading and relaxing area has been made much more inviting. The workstations are set at two heights for children of different ages. John, it was a big project, but you were confident. Have you managed to finish it? Actually, I'm not too sure whether I was confident, <laughs> actually. When I saw the plans, I thought this could be a lot of work. But the nice thing is, I think it's actually worth it. And you've had a lot of help, haven't you? Oh, very much so. And I couldn't have done it without them, to be quite honest. And all the little bits and pieces. And it's amazing how these little details, which don't actually cost a lot, can make all the difference. Very much so, yeah. And it's, um, OK, they're a little bit fiddly sometimes to put on, but it's worth doing that little extra, or going the extra mile, should we say. The new library at Drayton was realised within a budget of £2,000. The research zone allows for study, but doesn't stop traffic along the busy corridor. Helen, it's been really hard work this weekend, but it's all finished. Are you happy? I'm so happy. It looks absolutely amazing. You couldn't even imagine that the space could end up looking like this. It's incredible. And how do you think this is going to be used? Well, in so many different ways. I mean, just starting off over here, we've got all this workbenching down here where, you know, children can sit grab a book off the shelf and come and do the research and there was nothing like this before and it, it's so inviting the children are going to want to come in and sit down and do their research now whereas before they just grabbed a book and got out the doors as soon as possible it just looks amazing and you've got this fantastic chill zone right oh, here absolutely so how will this be used then within the well, school we've just been talking in so many different ways I mean, the first thing that's obvious is that it's such a comfortable place to come and sit down and share a book. I mean, the sofas just look amazing, and the bean bags. It's just the perfect place to come and curl up with a book. But also, we were also talking um, a second ago about those children that perhaps have had a distressing morning or, you know, something's happened to, to upset them, and it's the perfect place for them to come and, and chill out because there's nothing threatening. The colours are vibrant, and it's so relaxing and such a nice place for them to come and just have five minutes' time out. It's going to be amazing. And how are you going to take this forward through the rest of the school then? Well, it's give, fired us up. The next thing, I think, Foundation Garden will really get going with that and use some of these ideas, the colours, the signage, all the rest of it. It's just made such a difference to the way we think about things, I think. If you have a project that we can help with, or you'd like to tell us about something you've done recently at your school, contact All Change to the Teachers TV website. We'd love to hear from you.